Okay, it's a pleasure, uh, Martin, to uh, interview you here at SNEC um, in a new venue. And uh, let's get started with three questions. Uh, with silicon perovskite tandem cells apparently on the verge of commercialization, how long do you think standalone silicon devices will be around for? You gave some indication this morning they'll be around for a while, but what do yes, you think? I'm, I tend to be a little bit pessimistic about the likely rate of introduction of uh, silicon perovskite okay. tandems. Yeah, you know, mainly because of the lack of data about the field performance mm. of those devices. Yeah. So what has been published in terms of field performance hasn't been all that inspiring. Mm. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's still a long way from meeting the requirements yeah. for yeah. a viable commercial product. Yeah. And I remember, I think at the last SNEC, you also mentioned the toxicity of the lead. Is yeah, that yeah. The, so that's, that's another issue. It's not the perfect technology because yeah. it'd be better if it didn't have lead in it. Yeah. But many people have pointed out the amount of lead's tiny and if okay. it all leached out, uh, you know, it wouldn't do much damage, although yeah. I probably wouldn't want leaching out on the roof of my home, yeah, for example. Right, right. right. So I, I guess to answer the question, you know, I think silicon standalone is going to be here for a long time. So yeah. we're, we're going to see the technology develop to its full potential because while we're waiting for a viable tandem technology to do be developed, yeah. it's just going to push the silicon technology to its ultimate limits. And you, and you mentioned this morning that there's still this whole area of the directional, you know, having maybe cells, modules, specifically for single axis trackers, that's a whole area which still can develop. Yeah, yeah, the way of working out the efficiency limits of silicon solar cells has a fatal flaw in that it neg neglects the directionality of sunlight. Yeah. It, um, uh, you know, so if you can take advantage of the directionality yeah. of sunlight, you can improve efficiency above the 29.4 percent right. figure that's been regarded as a limit for a decade or more. Yeah, even beyond 30 percent. Yeah, even beyond. You 30 showed that, 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 feasible, yeah. that yeah. So we've simulated some devices that are beyond 30 percent using, yeah. you know, some of the, the techniques that are available right, for right. boosting the efficiency of thin cells. What do you think in terms of commercialization of that type of technology? Is that the yeah, idea? so um, it becomes more challenging. You've got to work harder mm -hmm. to get the performance from these devices yeah. and, you know, as you push higher and higher. But I think that's the bit of the industry that's like microelectronics, like mm -hmm. converting the wafer into a cell yeah. is the bit where things that one day were impossible become very doable yeah. the next. Yeah. So, you know, the type of technologies that are being yeah, introduced into commercial production now, like the Topcon and uh, Hetra Junctions and uh, all back contact type yeah. technologies are, are very difficult technologies. Yeah. Uh, you know, even when we were working in the lab, they were, mm. they were tough. Um, but the industry has uh, mastered those mm. and taken the cost out of them. So mm. um, I think that will happen. You know, the, so the efficiency will be the key thing rather than the difficulty of the Right. Making the cell. Would you venture a guess, you know, when these like single axis, you know, specific cells might enter the market to capture this additional efficiency? You talked about this. Yeah, it, it could happen quite quickly because the industry has been used to this progressively yeah. increasing performance. And, um, you know, the signs of reaching a limit there are in sight, mm. but this just opens, uh, you know, the floodgates a little and yeah. it gives you a little bit more leeway. Yeah. So I, I think um, there'll be companies showing an interest in it, and um, as they extract all that they can from what they're doing at the moment, yeah. they'll certainly explore these new approaches. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Second question, in the past you've advocated copper zinc tin sulfide, CZTS, for solar cells made from abundant non-toxic materials. Do you still see potential there? Yeah, yeah, there's always potential. The um, yeah, but one of the requirements for a successful tandem is that the cell that you stack onto silicon has to be at least 20% efficient. Mm. And uh, that's where the kites have shined because, uh, you know, that's where it's no problem getting up to 20% yeah. efficient with the perovskite cell. Um, but with these other technologies that, um, you know, are more attractive in some sense in that they don't involve toxic mm. elements and mm. uh, are likely to have the same severe stability issues, uh, you know, getting up to mm. that efficiency barrier has been the limit. Mm. 
So the, the copper zinc tin sulfide materials are one we're working on. We hold the world record and it's 12% at the moment. Okay. So we've still got a ways to yeah. go to get to our 20%. Yeah. And there's a range of other compounds that we're yeah. working on as well, but none of those are at 12% yet. So okay. we've still got even more work to do with those. But I think it's a very important area of research mm. in photovoltaics because if it proves that um, out that we can never solve the stability issue yeah. with the perovskites, yeah. you know, it'd be good to have another candidate there. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good, um, which is non-toxic. Um, third question, the last question, uh, when it comes to future cell concept, what other materials have caught your interest lately? either by themselves or for their potential to fit into a stack with silicon and others. Yeah, yeah, so we've, we've discovered a whole new group of materials that have the same crystal structure as silicon. Mm -hmm. So they're technically known as adamantine or diamond-like because right. they have that fourfold coordinated structure. So, you know, there's been um, eight cell technologies that are demonstrated mm -hmm. over 20% efficiency, mm -hmm. and seven of those have involved adamantine okay. semiconductors, with the perovskites being yeah. the only exception. So through searching through these adamantine mm -hmm. compounds, we're hoping we can find one that, you know, gives you uh, good efficiency quite quickly. So, you know, just recently, um, well, I was looking at the case of um, SIGS technology, copper indium gallium disulfide, yeah. and it took uh, 15 years to go from 10% efficiency with that technology mm. to to 15%. Yeah. So very slow progress, and then all of a sudden the floodgates yeah. opened, and that yeah. efficiency is now, you know, up 20, 23 and a half yeah. percent type of level. Yeah. So we're hoping with some of these other compounds, yeah. if we plug away at them, yeah. we'll have the same lucky break and yeah. um, make rapid progress with them. Great, great. Well, thank you, Martin, very much uh, for for coming here. And I know you have a busy schedule, so uh, super to catch up here at SNEC. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Nice talking to you. <laughs>